Okay. Um, let's talk about, we're going to talk about synergy today for a happier, healthier life. And I probably need some synergy after I leave here. <laughs> Try yeah. some green tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. A few of the things I've done, you know, my path to get here and so forth is, um, Mozilla said, and I appreciate her for having me on today. So thank you so much. Um, Synergy is the creative combination of two or more things, people, ideas, or organizations. When you put them together, um, multiply the outcome so that the total is greater than the sum of its separate parts. In mathematical terms, you, would get, you wouldn't get simple addition, you would get exponential addition. So that one plus one doesn't equal two, it equals something greater, it could equal 10, 20, 50, 1,000, a million. It just, it just varies from time to time. So uh, depending on what the, um, what the activity is. Um, when we practice synergy, intentionally practice synergy, um, it can feel magical because we creatively combine things together um, in a way that gives us results that are just amazing. And as you see the magician here uh, doing his thing with the assistant, um, you know, it's, it's just the, the creative com combining of, of several things that, that he's doing, that they're doing. And the wonderful thing about synergy is that it's reproducible. So that if you copy somebody else's creative combination of certain things under similar circumstances, you'll get similar results. If you somebody uh, develops a, an incredible cake recipe and you take the cake recipe and you copy that, you can get the same um, effects as, as the original person got. And you can even add things to it to even make it even better than, in your opinion at least, or in other many people's opinions better than, than what you, you inherited it with. So, um, so that, that part's kind of cool. Um, okay. Um, creatively, creative combination requires understanding the basics or the fundamentals. And when we try to be creative without knowing the fundamentals, our creativity is unproductive. And I remember when I was, uh, studying for the law school exam, uh, Professor Arthur Miller was talking about, if you don't really know the law, that kind of creativity on your, on your exams, we don't really need because you'll be all over the place and you won't really have a, um, a well, you know, you have flaws and so forth in your, in your exam. It's the same thing in anything that we do. So uh, it requires us to understand the basics and the fundamentals, or like I said, <laughs> Take the, take the existing recipe of someone who has already done it and then duplicate that. That's how, um, I know this is a negative side of synergy, but when they split the atomic, uh, when they split the atom and they use that to make the atomic bomb, uh, the United States tried to keep it, or I should say the, 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 the superpowers countries tried to keep it out of the hands of all the other countries because it was reproducible. And, uh, and that was certainly a, a, a use of synergy, although in a, in a harmful negative way. It was a positive aspect, splitting the atom, but uh, they used it to make a weapon, a super weapon, a horrific weapon. And that, that part was, that was ego and, and power and things of that nature. But I just want to uh, highlight the re reproducible part. In, in, uh, in groups, uh, synergy implies relationship, cooperation, creativity. Um, it's a win-win situation. Everybody wins. It's the one for all, all for one um, aspect of, uh, of, of, of a group. Um, and you can look around and see that in a lot of different situations. You can see it um, when you have a, a a dance troupe like this picture depicts like Alvin Ailey. If anybody's ever seen the Alvin Ailey dance troupe, you see synergy. And how many have seen Alvin Ailey before? Anybody? Yes, Hello? I have. This is Burks. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, okay, wow. I, okay. I didn't know if y'all were hearing me. Okay. Yeah, they are. They are amazing, and and you can see that the teamwork and the synergy, because of all the dancers, they just they're just like, they're incredible. I I can't even explain it, but they can they can move as one or inner. It's just, it's unbelievable. If you ever get a chance to see them, I strongly suggest you see them, no matter what the tickets cost. <laughs> Okay, synergy is everywhere. It's in all of creation. It's in the universe. It's in the galaxies, nature. And as we see, it's especially in nature where you get the sun. I mean, you get the, sky, the wind, the, uh, the air, I'm sorry, the water, the ocean, and land. You get those, that combination together. It just creates an incredible, incredibly healing environment and an environment that supports life. Same thing with the tropical rainforest. You have you have the sunlight, you have the earth, you have rain and seeds, plant seeds, wild seeds, and you get this beautiful oasis uh, that supports all kind of life. Uh, since we are part of creation, uh, synergy uh, naturally exists within our bodies. And before, before I move on to uh, synergy and healing, because that's what we're here for, are there any questions on the general concept of synergy? Well, just think about it. If you have some, we'll take some questions at the end, okay? So let's just keep going. I know I lost some time early on, that snafu. Um, <clears throat> okay, with as far as the body is concerned, the body is, there's synergy in the body because the whole body is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, and when we utilize our body's combined forces in a cooperative way, we can align with the laws of nature. And so that way synergy can be applied to health and wellness, where you can have two complementary medical treatments or two physiological systems in the body that can that have a shared action, which exponentially amplifies the health effects in the body. I wanna go over the four laws of holistic healing real quick. They're very short. Uh, the first is that the human body has an intrinsic ability to establish, maintain, and restore health. That is the, uh, the homeostatic action of the body. Um, it's designed to self-heal, to stay balanced, uh, just like our pH levels in our bodies are, made, uh, are, are, are designed to stay around 7.2. Any DV, uh, temperature of our, 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 our body temperature is around 98.6. It, it can deviate from that a little bit, but it it's always has a desire to go back to where it should be. And, and that's the same thing about our, our, our body overall. It has that ability. Now, we do a lot of things as humans to kind of get that off track. And that, that's, and that, you know, that's why we try to maintain a healthy lifestyle or correct errors when we uh, get off the path a little bit as humans are want to do. So the second one is identify and treat the cause. You know, when you go to a regular medical doctor, they, they, tr they treat the symptoms, symptom of an illness. And that's fine when you when you want to get somebody back on the battlefield as soon as possible. You you don't worry about the cause as much as you worry about the symptoms. You got a headache, hey, take a couple of these Tylenols or whatever. Get back get back to work. You know, uh, get back to the corporate job. Get back to the uh, get back to fighting the war. Get back to uh, the the system. Get back into um, you know you know doing what you got to do, whatever it is, being a parent or whatever. Um, but uh, holistic healing looks at the cause and, and addresses the causes um, and recognizes that the causes can occur on physical, mental, emotional, spiritual levels. And the third one is to treat the whole person. Again, we are a complex a combination of different parts of our body. And so uh, oftentimes the whole person needs to be considered when you're doing any, any kind of treatment. Sometimes the things that are causing 
the physical manifestation are so unrelated, we wouldn't even think about it. But when we treat the whole person, it gives us a better opportunity to get back to healing and back to health. Okay, okay. Uh, and then prevention is one of the most powerful tools because you, you're, you're, fighting, you're fighting an adversary, which is disease or illness that hasn't even manifested yet. And it's like, it's like shadow boxing or something. You, you, you never lose when you shadow box. You never lose when you do your, you're doing your Kung Fu against the air. You know, you, you, you're always winning. You have the leverage when you do prevention because the, the enemy hadn't gotten there. The enemy being disease hasn't gotten there and gotten a, a good toehold into your, into your body or your system yet. So you can win that way and, and mitigate uh, you know, the enemy if they do come. So um, as far as the body is concerned, yes, we have uh, several uh, levels in the body. We have physical level, which the physical level has many systems. We have mental level, which is thinking, uh, emotional, feeling, spiritual level, energetic level, and a social level because we all have a need to belong. Uh, we're social creatures as well as uh, individuals. We're all connected as well. Uh, we're all connected to the source as well. So it's a lot of connectivity that uh, exists with human beings. But um, you know, all these levels work together uh, to help us be the best version of ourselves. And our job is to maintain and repair these levels to the best of our abilities. <clears throat> So let's talk a little bit about the physical level. Uh, physical, uh, using synergy at the physical level helps us because uh, when we have an illness or something, um, that's where it manifests. It usually manifests in the physical level. So it just makes sense that we put our energy into the physical level. And that's what most, um, you know, everybody does. All the wellness people do that because uh, that's, that's where the obvious issue is. Um, and so in the, in the physical realm, the body is talking to us. It tells us something is amiss when we have a disease or illness or an imbalance. It says, hey, hey, look, listen up. You know, you're, you're doing something wrong. Something's off. You know, something's off. And it's up to us to interpret that language from our body and um, listen to it and then make the changes. So, you know, no matter what somebody tells you, nobody, no matter what uh, you, your paradigm is or what you believe, uh, just remember that your body never lies. I mean, I have some incredible uh, masters who I learned from doctors and people that have written books in the health and wellness areas and stuff that I revere, revere. But every single thing that they tell me doesn't apply to me. So when it comes between what they say, or maybe even what I believe and what my body tells me, ultimately I have to go with my body. I'll give you an example. Uh, nutritional yeast is amazing. It's full of B complex. Uh, it has B12 in it. It's a good source of, of, of B complex and it's, it's high in protein too. It has just about all the amino, the essential amino acids in it. But for Chris Clay, it kind of binds me up in my, my abdominal area. So it's not good, it clogs me up. So it's not good for me to take that, even though it is a good product. So I had to, you know, a while back when I was taking it, I just, it, I kind of narrowed it down to, oh, it's this nutritional yeast. And, and so that's an example of what I'm talking about. It's a great product, but for me, my body wasn't having it. And so, I, you know, I was just learning to listen to my body. So uh, fortunately, on the physical level, we have multiple tools that we can uh, we can stack together in a in a synergistic way, uh, complementary way, and 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 then knowing that our bodies will continue to provide feedback. On the spiritual level, uh, using synergy on the spiritual level is important too. Uh, because uh, uh, when we connect in with the creator or the source or God or, you know, whatever people refer to this, the, the creator as, 
uh, we're, we, we, we kind of get in alignment and people, a lot of people call that being in the flow. I don't know if you've heard that before, being in the flow, being in the flow. If you've ever been in the flow, it's a great feeling. You feel happy, you feel good, everything's rolling. You got the wind in your sails. It's all, all, you know, it's full speed ahead. You know, everything's cool, everything's good. Uh, when you're driving down the freeway, 80 miles an hour and your car, your Volvo or your BMW is humming and it's not that many cars on the freeway. You're just rolling and it's just like, oh, this is awesome. That's that that's on a on a or just on the driving level, that's kind of being in the flow. But I'm talking about connecting in with the divine source. And a biblical reference, when Saul of Tarsus, uh, forget that typo there. I have the Saul of Tarsus. Uh, I had first I had the Apostle Paul, and I took out the Apostle Paul because he wasn't the Apostle Paul yet, and I forgot to take out the duck. But anyway, uh, when Saul was on his uh, uh, road to Damascus to persecute Christians and was thrown off his horse, the voice that threw him off the horse and blinded him at the same time identified himself as "I am Jesus, uh, whom whom thou persecute." And this is the part that I want to focus on. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. So that has that has a reference to back in the old days when people used they had they used a prick with their ox to make sure that the ox would continue to do the work. When the ox, you know, re rebelled, he would hit the prick, and and, it, and the more he rebelled, the more painful it would get. So that reference is 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 kind of to that, but um, it's the same thing. When you go against the grain, things are much much harder. And so um, when we're in, we're in alignment with the creator, it allows us to get in the flow and it makes things so much easier and it makes our healing so much more effective and gives us that uh, divine um, um, uh, assistance as well. We can't really underestimate that. On a mental level, the mind is so important that many people feel like they are their minds. They feel like, I think, therefore, I am. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> you're not your mind. You're not your brain. You're not your mind. Uh, the, the mind is, uh, the brain is a tool, and the mind is centered in the brain, and they are both tools for us to use. A supercomputer, yes, a wonderful, magnificent tool that's multifaceted in so many ways. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But um, it is... It, and, 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 and every creation that we make starts in the mind. You know, we, we think it first and then we, we either speak it or we do it, but it always starts in the mind. So the, the mental level is very important. Why do I talk about the mental level? Because that's where we learn. That's where we get the, um, the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, copy the synergistic recipes of other people that's where we learn where we learn culture we learn everything through the mind and so um, it's the same thing with healing with health you know what motel does with the group it's it's a way for people to learn who come and listen take the classes to learn and use their minds youtube books you know i told you all i don't know if i told you all the story of the two friends that had the books and the one friend said you got a new book Yes. How much did you pay for it? I paid $70 for it. What? You paid $70 for that new book? And the guy said, no, I paid $70 for a master's uh, life. He condensed it all into one book. And I have that book. I invested $70 in that book. And so the moral of the story is you only pay for education once, but you pay for ignorance over and over and over and over again. So uh, the mental level is really important for us to continue growing because as much as we are uh, practitioners or you know, trying to maintain our health, we're also students first. We have to remember that to be students first. On the social level, the social level is cool because that's where we get our inspiration. This is where we get our fun. It, you know, we get our cultural support and our love and our emotional needs met and other you know, emotional reinforcements, confidence. Confidence is so important in our life and we get confidence from being loved. We get confidence from belonging, et cetera. 
and the social love what I feel is where we it's the spice of life and so you know all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy and so it's the same thing with our social love we need that we need that when we get when we're ill or something like that and our, our, our family members call us or they text us or they send us a, a, a gift card in the mail or they come by and visit or they bring us some food or they cook us something or they tell us how important we are whatever it, it it's so inspirational to us and it lifts our spirits and that just that 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 reinforcement really helps to heal us on a level that is non-physical so the social level is very important plus it's just fun Okay, going to the uh, energetic level, um, the energetic level is, is often overlooked in the, uh, in the medical community, the traditional medical community, um, and uh, it, but it consists of uh, many things, uh, some of which are the seven chakras you see here depicted in this um, person sitting in the lotus position. Um, the seven chakras, uh, I don't know, if, I don't have a pointer here, but the the, the one at the bottom is a root chakra going from bottom to top, the root chakra, the sacral chakra, the um, solar plexus chakra, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, and the crown chakra is above the head. And those are energy centers in the body. Um, also, uh, our body has uh, meridians and the heart field. So the meridians are a series of 12 individual energetic pathways that connect the organs and carry chi, which is the vital life force flow throughout the body. And I use them here to show, just give you an idea of how these meridians run through the body. And I believe this is the meridian, the path of meridians. And uh, uh, acupuncturists use the meridians pathways to, to that's where they place the needles. They want to help uh, unblock the chi force in your life to help you uh, in a distant part of your uh, body, or, um, or or something like that. Tap into that that uh, that meridian highway because a lot of times that energy is blocked for one reason or another. They stimulate it with the electro stem and the uh, acupuncture needles. Um, so. Um, this has been practiced in Chinese med traditional Chinese med medicine for over 5,000 years. This awareness of the energetic body, the chakras, the chi, the aura. Uh, the aura is this energetic body that exists outside of the physical body, connected to it, but outside of the physical body. And we probably have three or four layers of auric feel around us. Um, and I was going to do a demonstration on how to feel chi yourself. We could feel chi right now, but you can't see my face or my hands. So, um, so I don't know if I want to do it now. Maybe I'll do it when I, we get out of this program. Uh, we, yeah, that's how I'll do it. We'll get out of the program and I'll show you. We'll just give you a chance to go in and uh, connect in and, and, and feel the chi yourself, feel the energy. Okay, let's go to... Let's go to the physical body because the physical body is, like I said, that's where the place where all the illnesses mostly manifest, not the mental illnesses, but most of the illnesses are of a physical nature. And so, um, so fortunately, there are a lot of systems within the physical level. So we have ability to synergize on a um, with the different systems as well. Pay attention to the different different systems. Uh, just understanding that they're there. So uh, the question to the group is, how many physical systems can you name? But I, when I when I did this quiz myself, without looking at anything off the top of my head, I counted I counted nine, but I made a mistake on one of them. So I really got eight right. Eight out of eleven. They're actually eleven. So um, let's see, did I, let me see, did I write them down? If I didn't write them down, we might have a problem. Okay, um, so um, if one of the systems is a digestive system, does anybody, can anybody tell what the other systems are? If you're not muted. Cardiovascular is one. Yeah, circulatory. That, that's Respiratory. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what about the nervous system? We have the nervous system, we have the endocrine system, mm -hmm. we have the interglumentary system, which that's the one I, I made a mistake on that. I called it the something, some other word, but it wasn't that. Uh, that's the uh, skin, hair, and nails. The skeletal system, the muscular system, the digestive system, the respiratory system, the immune system, the reproductive system, and the urinary system. And once you list them all like that, it's like, wow, yeah, we do have all those, you know, <laughs> it's yes. kind of uh, amazing that we have all these systems compacted into uh, our bodies. It's, it's, it's all, all praise to the creator. Um, <clears throat> now, imagine that you're your own primary physician because you really are. You know, your health is your responsibility. And I, 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 I challenge you all to choose your tools. And I, I, I put some examples of some tools that we use on various levels. On the physical level, we see diet. We talk about that a lot in this group. Exercise to some degree, deep breathing, supplements, herbs, massage, rest, you know, sleep, uh, ocean beach during high tide. I put that in there because the uh, negative ions that occur when we go to the we go to the uh, ocean during high tide. The, the, the waves are crashing up on the on the beach. Uh, this incredibly uh, beneficial and therapeutic and healing. Um, and the spiritual level, we have prayer, fasting, meditation. So so we have different we have different tools on different levels. And so I would say to you all. The next time you are imbalanced or something like that, think about what, what tools am I going to employ on the physical level? And what tools am I going to employ on the spiritual level? And what tools am I going to um, explore on the mental level? And the energetic level and the social level. So you synergistically, you can create a mosaic of these different tools that you choose at your own, whatever you like, or whatever is, you know, uh, consistent complementary pieces or whatever. And you, you create your own little uh, uh, healing, you know, modality. And, and you could even say, um, you can, you can, you can have a practitioner in there as well. But a lot of times the, the prevention and the little nagging things are things that we never go to a doctor for. We work on them in our kitchens or in our offices or in our living rooms, watching TV or something. So, um, so that that's you have you have these bags you can choose from. And don't when you get ill, don't just look at it from a physical standpoint. Because I mean, you could, but you're limiting yourself. You're not you're not you're not employing the power of prayer or the power of meditation uh, or or the insight from a dream or something along those lines and, and so forth and so on. Okay, Dr. Stephen Covey said, um, synergy is everywhere in nature. You plant two plants close together, the roots commingle and improve the quality of the soil so that both plants will grow better than if they were separated. If you put two pieces of wood together, they will hold much more than the total weight held by each separately. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. One plus one equals three or more. Uh, yeah, that's a quote I could have had at the beginning of this, and I probably should have. But Stephen Covey uh, is the um, author of the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That book is one of the most amazing books I've ever read. And it was where I really started, you know, my whole synergy practice myself is from Stephen Covey. And um, he, his book right here, uh, I, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People was written in 1989. He's passed on now, but um, he had, the book sold more than 20 million in sales and it translated into 40 languages. And it was the first nonfiction audio book in the United States publishing history to sell more than 1 million copies. It has, it sold 1.5 million uh, audiobook copies. 
So I highly recommend either version, but especially the audio version. It's truncated in a way, but it's so, it, it's just incredible. And that will help you to be able, and here I've highlighted the seven habits on the slide. Um, the first is to be proactive. That's taking responsibility for your choices and behaviors. In this chapter, he talks about Viktor Frankl, who was a POW in World War II, uh, uh, Nazi uh, Jewish uh, uh, concentration camp. And uh, Dr. Frankl said, you can take everything from me. He said that to himself. You can take everything from me, but you can't take my freedom of choice. And so even though he was being tortured, even though he was being starved, even though he is he lost his, his uh, he lost his uh, parents and his siblings all died in the concentration camps. He focused on what he what it would be like when he got out of the concentration camp. He focused his mind on very positive things, and it enabled him to survive. They were mar they marveled at him, but it enabled him to survive. And he wrote a, an incredible book after he got out and lived a long life after he got out. But um, just the fact that we have it's not what happens to us, it's how we react to it. Because everybody deals with some kind of, you know, challenges, right? The second was it'll begin with the end in mind. That is understanding where you're going so that you have a focus in your in your direction and your actions. You you always are doing things that are consistent with what your goal is, essentially what what, what that is. And he talks about paradigms and um mental mental maps and things like that concepts that have really help um drive you know these points home put first things first so this is a this is a subject about i mean this is a habit about time management you know where do we put our time do we put it into you know frivolous time wasting things or we do do we put it in high leverage activities like planning and preparation communication with our loved ones and things of that nature things that are uh investments in ourselves the fourth one is think win-win, you know, whenever you can. Uh, our, all our agreements should be a win-win. It should be something in it that I that I get out of it and something that you get out of it. And not, not just so much as like a compromise, that's the lowest form of win-win, but a higher level of win-win where it's not my way or your way, it's a third way that's better than either one of our uh, 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 offerings were when we first started. So that requires the two parties to to work together, as you see in the fifth uh, habit, which is seek first to understand then to be understood. So that is one where we listen and, and thoroughly understand what the other person needs. And then before we even talk about advocating for, I mean, before we even advocate what we, where our position is and the other person Tries to understand where we're at, and then we work on a solution to try to uh, that's better than both of us uh, it initially uh, suggested. And then synergize is the sixth one, and that's where I learned a lot about synergy. Um, it is just an amazing book, an amazing chapter. And then sharpening the saw is taking care of your body by eating right, exercise, and adequate rest. You know, getting off the merry-go-rounds, spending time, you know, uh, taking breaks when you need them, uh, vacating, when you vacate, vacate, you know, vacation as in vacation, things like that. And so, um, and finally, um, you know, think of this uh, not necessarily as an end, as an end, but as the beginning where we consciously uh, use our synergy and our creative um, power and our imagination to um, give us wins in places that we wouldn't necessarily we might let leave on the on the cutting room floor we might leave on the table so uh so that's what i wanted to say about synergy and i hope you all got something out of it uh, it's a very interesting uh subject to do um it was something i was talking to motel about that i wanted to do uh because i use it all the time i thought it was so important that um I just thought it was so important that um, that I, that I just wanted to teach it on it. I love teaching. I love I love teaching, um, and I I just really want to share that with you. So uh, you know, I do hope you you got something out of it. I've used synergy for a long time in my life before I read Dr. Covey, but naturally I used it, and um, and so it's been a blessing to me in many many ways. And so uh, I want to share with you and hopefully you know it has some benefit.
is a little hard to get everything together conceptually because it's so much you have to just limit your conversation to a few things because it's everywhere and everything um and so um, i gave i know i gave you a lot but uh, so i'll just uh be quiet open the floor if anybody has any questions or comments Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Chris. There were several comments in the chat. Um, the uh, Joby, the name of the name of the author is uh, Stephen Covey, C O V E Y, and uh, uh, we just—it's amazing how you pulled all that together, and which will help us to to think in terms of our body and our healing and our transition from to a plant-based diet uh, or transition to just eating better uh, uh, it will make it easier for us when we look at the whole uh, being um, so much greater than the parts. And yeah, I want to I want to I want to do this chi exercise too, okay? Go so ahead. So we have we have hand sharpers in our hand. You see Iron Man, he does like this, and he has these repulsor rays that come out and you know gets the bad guys or whatever. Uh, we actually have hand sharpers uh, in our in our palms. And so I want you to open and close your hands, you know, 10 or 12 times. Really open them and close them, close them as much as you can. Okay. Now I want you to, once you're done with that, I want you to rub your hands vigorously together for about I don't know, 15 seconds or so, rub them really hard, really vigorously together. It'll feel some friction or a little bit of warmth or heat or something like that. Now, bring your hands close together like this in a rotating manner, but don't touch, the, don't touch. You should slow down. You should feel some energy there. Now I want you to do this slowly, in and out, close together, but not touching. Slowly, in and out. Slowly, the slower you go. Can you feel any energy between your hands? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that, that's an example. We are energetic creatures. And it's no wonder because we actually, you know, we in a, in a sense, we, we have the, we can run electrical currents through our bodies and and things like that. I was listening to uh, some guy on YouTube and he was talking about how much energy we have, you know, like like a battery almost. We have a lot of energy in our cells, the mitochondria and so forth. And uh, if you could harness it all, you could, you could actually power things with it. But, um, and so I've used my hands to help, you know, heal people like, or I say treat people, just in, the, in their auric field. Just, just lay them down and just use my hands in a certain way over their body, over their head, close but not touching. And they feel the energy from my hand chakras and it's very palpable as well. So if you've ever gotten Reiki um, uh, treatments or anything like that, there are other people that, other practitioners that do um, uh, different forms of energetic healing with the hands and so forth. That's all in, all in the alternative side. So I just, gave that demonstration just to show you that it's not just hokey pokey, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a real thing. So, uh, so yeah, um, great. And um, so I wasn't able to see the questions in the chat, but let me, if there are any questions, but let me pull this up here. Yes, 